Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we begin with the test launch of a Crew Master A in career mode this time and we'll continue to test it in career mode until we get it right. I have not changed the thrusters to hydrogen gas thrusters or anything like that. We're still using um, Arizine and N204 here and that is because of the balance. We don't want to rebalance it. Uh, again, we're testing it uncrewed. It's got a Thor avionics unit in it, and let me get it started. So, run crew master, and hopefully this is all. Uh, I, it's been a while since I've tried the launch script of this, and I don't remember if there was anything I needed to fix. I do remember it getting to orbit, so that's a good sign. Here we go. And launch. Whoa. Okay. That's fine. Getting its roll. Well, frame rates are great right now. Shear sure has no problem with the physics. Passing through max Q here. We're past 50% of our pitch control. Expecting two engines to cut out to correct that. And there we go. Two engines cut out right on time. And there it goes. It does keep some fuel in there. I wonder if stage recovery thinks that that can land. I'm not sure. We get do get tossed up a little bit higher than I would like. But we do want to end up with some time to apoapsis so this can complete the burn for orbit. If this actually works out alright, we should try a rendezvous with the station or something. Okay, last five seconds. Getting a little bit... okay, good, fine. Separate. Ignition. Might want some RCS here. Okay, uh, the thrust reports are firing like minimally, but they seem to be firing. I added more heat protection to these guys, so hopefully that'll help. Uh, probably I don't want to thrust limit them when we're going down through the atmosphere, but we'll see. Certainly not pointing prograde right now. That's a bit worrying. Uh, you know what? Uh, for now, let's turn these off and wait till we get to apoapsis before circularizing. Well, uh, let's see. Oh, okay, this message says that the core, despite having some fuel, definitely did not. Um, yeah, it burned up. It burned up. It didn't have a chance to try and use its engines to save itself. The engines do have a spare ignition. But they don't really have the throttle range. They don't go low enough in throttle to save themselves. Especially since there's no center engine to use. Hmm. I do feel like that there's something lacking about our RCS thrusters here. Are you guys working at all? I mean, I wonder if having this tank locked means that those aren't working properly. I think that's what's happening. And so Smart ASS thinks that it should be able to use those, but it's not. So we'll just unlock that and pump up fuel later. Also, we'll make sure to activate these radiators. We might need bigger radiators, considering they're all the way up to 100% of cooling. And uh, once... I mean, we should just be using this little tank here, which is not protected, and would boil off otherwise. Okay, we are now fully orbital. I'll get the periapsis up to uh, 200 kilometers. We'll round at uh, one and a half hour orbit, for simplicity's sake. So, let me cut it there, and we'll go around, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, one and a half hour orbit, we'll stay in orbit for a day and then come back down. 
All right, 290 by 276 is our test orbit, and now we're going to wait. Well, let's see the exact time that we're over KSC, and maybe I should adjust based on that. Seems like we're actually a little bit ahead of the game, so maybe a lower orbit would be better. Okay, so I'm going to try and use a re-entry script that I adapted from the shuttle re-entry script that I used for Dinosaur uh, for that video. And so we will see how this works. May or may not. Um, yeah, we'll see. So edit um, CM re-entry. Okay, we have ignition of the OMS engines, our little RTGs that have hydrogen running through them. Now the script is told to uh, shut off the engines once the periapsis reaches zero, and we'll see how fa far past zero it gets before actually shutting them down. All depends on the physics tick. Oh, only 129 meters, not too bad. Right now it's reading that we're a little bit short, and so it's pitching down to get a little bit more lift. But it's limited to between 37 and 45 degrees, which is what the shuttle generally ranged between. Now the estimates that it's using to adjust its pitch are based on the dinosaur. So that could be wrong, especially since I didn't fully test a dinosaur at all. Uh, the only numbers I've got good numbers for are for the shuttle. And so obviously this has different aerodynamics than the shuttle. And so those numbers are probably incorrect. And it's probably not pitching the way it ought to. But that's what testing is for. We'll find out what the real numbers are. I'm recording this video, so I will have a good look at all of this and jot the numbers down and readjust based on when we where we end up if we end up too far away I'll know how to adjust it and so forth okay we are in the midst of the region where the shuttle typically gets some lift and uh, the crew master is doing so as well we would like the lift not to go beyond 80 kilometers but it looks like it will so uh, I think the crew master gets more lift than the shuttle. Right now, as far as our pitch control, we're very good. Does not seem to have much problem with that. And our Arizina and Antua 4 is holding out nicely. Though, of course, uh, we didn't do any sort of docking with a space station or anything like that. So those stores would be much lower if we're doing a normal mission. Well, now the vertical speed is going down again, so we'll go above 80 kilometers, which is not nice, but uh, hopefully not too far beyond that. Okay, we're headed down again. We topped out at 82.5 kilometers. And there's Baja, California. Oh, we have overheating of the tail tank. Hmm. Okay, well it was empty, so hopefully it won't change the balance too much. But yeah, we're going to need some more heat. I, I can't understand. I guess it was just getting heating from the other parts? Yeah, not entirely sure. I, I think that happened during the test as well, right? I, it was just not a priority thing. I'll try and get a more shielded part for that, I guess. I mean, it's right next to those RTGs and everything. I'm still surprised that it got overheated, but yeah, we'll, we'll work something out. There are those procedural shielded tanks. We're currently using about 20% of our total pitch authority, so that's not bad. Going up again a bit, that's not great. That's the coast of Mexico, and so we're going to be headed over to the Gulf of Mexico now. And 
and it still it thinks that it's landing short so um, going up is probably a good thing at this point but we would like to smooth out the trajectory so that it doesn't go up so much uh, we have some roll issues it looks like and a pitch authority is suddenly maxed out for some reason and I don't know why uh, KOS has gone all bad with things I yeah this is not good um, is it because of our center of something or another I don't want to open the bays I'm trying to get at these tanks I think I should have kept the lock tank in front locked but oh man oh, okay we need to go to locked view that would be helpful um, where are those tanks okay yeah, I think it's because the forward RCS was depleted and that ended KOS's ability to control things. That's probably what happened. We need to constantly pump the fuel up there. Or I don't know why fuel crossfeed isn't working properly. Well, we're in a bad state now over the Gulf of Mexico. Ooh. Yeah, well, we've been here before. Oh. But more of it might stay intact this time. What well, actually blew up? Uh, let's see if it can get a handle on itself. I don't know. Um... So the tank was heated by the candle engine. Mm. Oh, control surfaces were lost due to aerodynamic stress. Well, without the aerodynamic control surfaces, it's going to have a hard time trying to... Let me turn RCS back on. It's told to turn it off below a certain altitude. It's supposed to be using the control surfaces now, but... I think uh, right now that's not doable. Uh, it does have the canard still and the rudders, but roll control is going to be a problem, especially it has one of these left. Let me see if we can make sure that roll control... Okay, roll control is on on the canards. That's something at least. Okay, it's, it's uh, reoriented properly. Okay. So all we need to do is make sure that the this fuel is retained and we make sure that so those thrusters still get fueled. I'll take a look at what the crossfeed issue might be. We're obviously landing short, so we're going to have to start a retroburn later than we do with the shuttle and the and the dinosaur. Well, we're going to test out a splashdown landing. It will give me control at 5 kilometers. We're about 8 degrees short of the KSC. Okay, there we go. I don't have the atmospheric pilot aid thing in this. Ooh. Which would be better than SAS, but we'll make do. It's wiggling a lot, and of course we've lost control surfaces, so not the best situation. We don't have drogue chutes per se. I mean, we do have little parachutes on top of the cockpit and all as an escape plan, but that's about it. Let's level out and bleed some speed off. It really wants to pitch down right now. I'm not entirely sure what the stall speed of this is. It's still fairly heavy at 14 tons. Still carrying a lot of the hydrogen too. We're tending off to one side pretty severely as we slow down. Ooh. 
Ow, 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 ow. Whoa. Oh. Okay, well, let's take stock. Um, we lost two of the RTGs, and the other two are probably flooded out. Um, though, I guess that won't do plutonium too much damage. We lost a wing. We flipped over. Okay, the game is a little bit indecisive. Flipped over. The crew probably would have been knocked out, uh, knocked around a bit, maybe knocked out, but uh, let's say they would have survived. And yeah, well, mild improvement. We know what we need to do, so that's the good thing. And we can recover vessel and at least get two of these very expensive engines back. Well, even with the losses, we got quite a bit back. 42,000 funds, uh, 14,000 just for the cockpit. And uh, if we take a look, the reaction wheels are really expensive. 3,000 for that. Uh, the docking system, almost 2,000. And just the plutonium is quite expensive. 7,574. And that's probably the bulk of the cost of the little engines in the back. Yeah, actually the engines, two of them are about 2,000 funds, less than 2,000 funds. It's the plutonium that costs a lot in those engines, which is, that makes sense, of course. So yeah, but a huge recovery, and uh, I think the cost of launch is only 67,000, so it's uh, quite a big chunk of the entire launch cost, so it's good. Anyway, let's uh, turn to Lunapod. Okay, well, here our lunar station. Unfortunately, the station's still rotating, and I tried to use RCS to stop it, but that didn't work very well. And we still are getting sounds from this particular engine that are interesting, interesting sounds. But, yeah, anyway, let's check whether everything's okay over at this end. No, it's not. There's no electric charge there for beginners. And um, this is probably the best place to get electric charge. Okay, out. Food, water, and oxygen is a little bit low. Uh, there's no air in 204 here. We've got a lot of problems. Let's get more oxygen. The station is still recharging electric charge at nighttime, which makes me think that the nuclear engine is actually supplying some power, which is good. Okay, well, we have uh, Felipe still in here, and we have ladder rungs, not exactly a ladder, but hopefully it'll do. It doesn't extend all the way up though, so that's worrisome. Okay, well, here goes nothing. We really need to use a lot of RCS so that we don't get whacked by the station rotating. Probably should have just filled up the food and water as well, but I'm not entirely sure how this is all going to shape up. I don't know whether I'm going to connect this to the rest of the base or we're just going to be rotating Felipe out and uh, sending somebody else up. Could go either way. All right. Oh, ooh. I've made a bit of a mistake here. We needed to wait a little while before doing this. Okay. Set as docking port. Well, now we have to match a rotating station. Okay. Well, I don't see any alternative to try and use RCS to stabilize the station. Uh, yeah, persistent rotation is quite persistent about this. Hopefully it's all right now. Yeah, trying to dock with it while rotating was just not working. Let's keep it on kill rotation while we try and redock here. It's still firing its thrusters though. Building large stations is going to be a bit of a hassle if it's going to have rotational issues. We don't really have joint issues right now. I mean, it's not wiggling all over the place or anything, but um, it's possible that we're going to have 
more and more difficulty keeping it just stable when it gets like knocked in a way or something like that. Okay, we have docked again, and now let's wait for the right time in order to land at Moon Base 1. Okay, we are in a good enough situation for a landing. Electric charge is fully replenished. It's sort of nice having a nuclear reactor attached to the station, come to think of it. Uh, rather handy. Uh, it's a good thing it's all the way over there. But it is time now to once again separate Luna Pod and try this again. Uh, well, let's just check. Um, oh, I'll put in more food, water, and oxygen. Why not? Oh, well, food and water. Everything else seems to be fine. I've uh, created a different uh, sort of system using the lunar module instead of the Gemini cabin. It's heavier, uh, substantially heavier, but uh, it has a better sort of base so it doesn't tip over. And we've had that sort of problem with this before. Uh, so maybe that'll be a little bit safer, but for now we'll uh, try this out. It also has three Gemini lander engines, just like this does. Now if this works, then we have the beginnings of a complete system. We have the Crewmaster, we've got the Transfer Demon, and we've got a pod to land on the moon. Which would be, I mean, if we can reuse all these things, that would be great. The only problem is, is that the Crewmaster carries six to orbit max. And the Transfer Demon only carries two, and this only carries two, and even the Lem version only carries two. Okay, we have an initial descent path. And it looks like we're pretty much lined up with the target. Trying to adjust our orbit so that we head a little bit further south. Sorry about the blue flashing. I really shouldn't have put the base on the edge of a crater. It makes it a little bit hard to read exactly what our target difference is. Okay, it seems like we're going to be one kilometer off like that. I don't really see which direction it is. Okay, reducing that target difference now. Yeah, the RCS is tough to deal with. So, what I want in a lander is really nice big RCS thrusters. That's what I really want. Maybe a reaction would be nice too. Okay, we're on the ground. RCS off. Oh, that was horrible. Okay. Right. I guess we just do a rotation then. Because, I mean, we've got enough to go back to orbit. I don't want to try and nudge this back to Moon Base 1. That's going to be trouble. So, let's see if a Kerbal can get out of Moon Base 1 and come over here. Let me, let me, let me do a save first. Let me do a real determinative save with Alt F5. I'm going to call it uh, Felipe on the Moon. Okay, the base is looking fine. Don't know how long that's going to last, but uh, let's see. Pilot Engineer. I think, uh, well, it makes sense to rotate the pilots, right? Because we don't have an engineer to replace Bill right now. I get the strong feeling that Lunapod G is not robust to being knocked over. Oh well, this is going to take too long otherwise, so let's try a little bit of uh, jetpack boost. Now, are the ladder rungs low enough for Joan to grab them? Uh, no. Needs to jump. 
Oh, okay. Ooh, 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 no, that doesn't look good. Please don't be doing something horrible. Oh, man, Kerbal. Okay, uh, how about not using the jetpack? Um, oh, oh, don't, 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 no! Oh, and then there's that, oh, oh man. Okay, we've grabbed on to the rungs. Very good. Oh, oh, uh, attaching to it has started the Lunapod actually moving to that side of it. That's, oh, and as, as Joan climbs, it's skidding. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. And she's chattering. Okay, well, yeah, this is not going to be the best system, I think. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know how that physics works, but... Joan on one... So, uh... Board, board, grab, 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 oh, man. And considering how much Joan is pushing the pod just by trying to grab onto things, I don't think using the jetpack to get up there is a good idea. So if you're thinking about that, I, I'm not too happy with that thought. Come on. Ah. Um I I don't know if I can get Joan up in there safely. Yeah, I don't think our I mean, yeah, we probably should have added a few more rungs. Hmm. Yep, this is not satisfactory at all. We're going to call this a test we're not gonna do a crew rotation we're just gonna test the system and send it back up there let's get Joan back into the base I just don't feel safe about trying to do that and since you know we have well we have that pod to use if we want to get a single Kerbal off so I suppose if something goes wrong with this Luna pod, we could send a Kerbal up using that. Otherwise, the Kerbal's going to have no place to survive, right? Because it's not enough food, water, and oxygen. Maybe I'll try using the jetpack then? I don't think using the jetpack would even work, though. Anyway, uh... Oof. And that, that peculiar issue with them... Descending to the ground and it causing all sorts of weird visual issues. It's not exactly something that instills a whole lot of... No, come on. Grab. Climb. Oh, it did. It happened. It happened. You know what? Let, let's just bring... I'm going to restore the save that I started off before Joan decided to destroy things and cannot quick load in this scenario. Well, I'll fix that. Or maybe maybe we'll just use the other Lunar Lander Mark II. Uh, it was sort of, in a way, more successful than Lunapod, so maybe we'll give it credit. We certainly have enough Delta V in Lunapod, but... It's just not a robust system. So I won't quick load unless something else goes wrong that's glitchy. We'll just uh, have Felipe... Or uh, we'll have Joan head up in the Lunar Lander Mark II. If Joan can climb the ladder. If Joan can't climb that ladder, then, then we'll have to restore the quick save. Because we're not going to let a Kerbal die because things like to topple over here and there's all sorts of weirdness about them crashing into the ground 
Surprisingly, I don't think that it's realistic that if a Kerbal flops onto a landing strut, it explodes. What we need is a much flatter lander vessel. I mean, not even like this or not even like the limb. I'm thinking like, you know, like a bus. But the thruster configuration on that's going to be very annoying. Well, at least this ladder extends to the surface. I mean, the whole problem was that the ladders took up too much volume and I couldn't get a Kerbal to carry a ladder. I just need to increase the volume that they can accommodate. Forward. And, uh, well, we want to control from here, surely. 2,900, easily enough to get back to orbit. Uh, before we make any permanent decisions, let's make sure Felipe can get out of his pod and get into the base. We need to be able to scrap these things for material kits. That would be helpful. Man, scrap all of Moonbase 1 eventually, probably. Okay, grab... And board. All right, I think it is safe to launch Joan back to the station. Okay, retracting ladder. Targeting the station. We could probably launch now. The station is high enough that we can get into a lower orbit and catch up. Station is going retrograde. There's the marker in the opposite direction. Let's just go with orbit there. Okay. Well, uh, yep. Looks good. Let's go. Oh, RCS on, of course. Okay, landing gear up. Come on, landing gear up. And the light lunar lander is uh, once again in flight. It's a little nifty self doing its job. Looks like our relative inclination to the station will be a mere 0.5 degrees or so. And that's about as low as it can go. Okay, at this point I'm gonna cut the engines so that uh, we can do the rest of the burn at apoapsis, keeping our periapsis to 26 kilometers so that we'll be in a good situation to catch up. Let's see. Ab maneuver in a minute. Boost up. Up, up, up. Too fast. Okay, well, the overall rendezvous is complete and we are approaching the station right now. Um, I should probably just have a kill rotation there. Um, yeah, and it occurs to me that I'm not entirely sure I have a place to dock. We will find out. I need a propellant-only docking port somewhere. I, well, actually, come to think of it, the place that the Lunapod G was occupying should be a propellant-only docking port. Lunapod G only has a propellant-only docking port, so I guess it'll be alright. See, now, this little thing has more powerful RCS thrusters. That really helps. Something else we should add to Lunapod G. Okay, we are approaching the station, and I can confirm that the sound from the nuclear reactor kicked in at 200 meters. So it's only at 200 meters that we get that sound. It's not all the way out to the edge of uh, the 2.25 meter range. Okay, well, anyway... Uh, we did a uh, minor crew rotation. Joan is back at the station. Felipe is at the base. But Lunapod G still needs some work. Uh, so I'm going to have to end the episode here. And we'll turn, hopefully, to something different next time. Uh, we do have a crew master uh, under construction right now. It'll take 56 days. That doesn't leave us much to do, honestly. 
because if we're waiting for that, maybe uh, we've got a few craft that are already constructed. Let's take a look. I think maybe a moon port resupply mission would be a good idea uh, just to keep this topped off. We've got four crew up here now and only 87 days of food remaining. A lot of that food got transferred down to the surface on a lunapod. So yeah, I guess a luna, uh, moon port resupply mission and then maybe we'll time warp and try crewmaster A again. Um, we will have to make sure to pump the fuel up front and adjust the re-entry script so that hopefully it'll hit Cape Canaveral this time. We'll see. Alright, so on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.